Hi, I'm Dr. Isaac Reichman, President of Digestive Associates of Houston and Clinical Associate Professor at Baylor College of Medicine and University of Texas Health Science Center in Houston. I will talk to you about our study on the use of metal self-expanding stents in the management of gastric outlet obstruction after vertical sleeve gastrectomy. This study was done in conjunction with Dr. Dan Wynn and Dr. Douglas Fishman. Vertical gastrectomy or vertical sleeve gastrectomy, also known as VSG, is a restrictive type uh, surgery performed for morbid obesity in which 85% of the stomach is removed along the greater curvature, leaving a sleeve type residual stomach uh, that extends from the gastroesophageal junction to the pylorus. There is no removal of any other uh, part of the stomach. We started noticing patients after the surgery that develop an obstructive type clinical picture, which included nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and intolerance to food. We did contrast studies that identified a stiff type residual stomach, delayed in the emptying of the contrast out of the stomach, and there appeared to be an angulation in the distal uh, suture line. We did endoscopy in these patients and identified the same changes in which particularly uh, of uh, worry was the angulation at the end of the suture line at the level of the incisura, a few centimeters proximal to the prepyloric area. We postulated that if we place a self-expanding metal stent fully removable in these patients, we could alleviate the obstructive clinical picture and then mold the stomach as well as the distal portion of the suture line to the uh, stent, thus relieving the obstructive uh, component of the surgery. We studied nine patients, uh, all of which were women. Mean average was th of age was 35 years. We studied these patients on an average of three and a half weeks after the surgery had been performed. We used a fully covered metal stand that expands to 23 to 25 millimeters of different lengths. The stand was chosen to cover the entire length of the suture line extending from just the G junction to just distal to the um, suture line and the uh, antrumor and the prepyloric area. Of these patients, one the stand was placed. Most of them require only one stent. A few require two stents to achieve our goal. We left the stent in place and most patients were able to resume oral intake within 24 hours after stent placement. In, uh, most patients were able to resume diet, semi-solid diet, within four days after the stent was placed. All patients developed some abdominal pain which resolved within the first week after stent was placed. All patients responded to stent therapy except for two. One responded after a second stent was placed three days after the initial one, and one patient just did not respond to therapy at all. We left the stent in most patients and removed them within 13 weeks after placement. After we removed the stent, we followed these patients for four uh, months, uh, and during that period of time, none of the patients had recurrence of the symptoms that they were able to maintain a regular diet with a restriction from the surgery. One patient required surgical intervention to correct the symptoms. There are scant data on this subject of obstruction after gastric sleeve uh, surgery and more so on the endoscopic management of this complication. We are encouraged by our results. We look forward to a larger number of patients, define better the um, therapy in these patients, and certainly a longer follow-up after stent removal. Thank you for your attention.